Greetings everyone, I hope you're well. I've declared numerous times in my books, blogs, articles, interviews, and even in these videos that the first step that should be taken before you embark upon attempting to modify your dog's behavior is to learn about the wolf in your dog. Learn the many behavioral traits and mechanisms your dog inherited from the wolf and how to this day they continue to influence your dog's interaction with you and its environment. Doing so may not help you accept a particular behavior, but knowing its origin will, at a minimum, let you know what you're up against should you decide to change that very behavior. And when you know that, you can devise and implement a training plan that will have a high chance of success because it will be in line with your dog's natural abilities to understand what it is you want him to do and why he should do it. However, no matter how often I give this advice and no matter the thousands of dog owners that have proven they benefited from my advice, there are always those who scream from their sagging and leaking rooftops, there's no wolf left in dogs, Brian. Heck, they don't even look like wolves anymore. And they for sure don't act like one. Geez, everybody knows that. <laughs> well, for those of you who harbor these misguided assumptions, allow me to introduce you to a few experts who obviously don't know that. One of those experts is ethologist Adam McClossie, who writes in his book, Dog Behavior, Evolution, and Cognition. It has always been known that understanding wolf behavior is important for research on dog behavior. Imagine that. However, accumulation of this knowledge has been very slow process. This led us to the idea of socializing some wolves in order to obtain comparative data. This research not only opened our eyes to the very different world of wild canids, but it also taught us to be very cautious about coming to hasty conclusions about behavioral differences between dog and wolf. What Adam is referring to when he states that accumulation of knowledge about wolf behavior has been a very slow process is that much of the knowledge we have has been derived from secondhand information, stories, and from anecdotes gained from personal observations of wolf behavior in the wild. In fact, it's how I gained much of my knowledge from my days in Alaska. And that's okay, you know, because Dr. Franz de Waal, author of many books on the subject of ethology and biology, believes anyone who intends to conduct experiments on animal cognition should first spend a few thousand hours observing the natural, spontaneous behavior of the species in question. Check. Dr. Franz de Waal also firmly believes that nothing evolves all of a sudden without antecedents. All new behavior traits tap into pre-existing processes and structures. Notice, pre-existing processes and structures. And according to Dr. Stephen Spott, author of Societies of Wolves and Free-Ranging Dogs, the processes and structures that influence dog behavior are descended from a common pool of genes shared with the wolf that is ancient and deep. Evidenced by the fact that 90 plus visual and tactile behaviors documented for wolves such as face paw, tongue lick, mouth, snarl, stand over, stand taut, tail high, tail low, tail wag, walking stiff legged, raised leg urination, genital sniff, and nose push, just to name a few, also occur in domestic dogs. Lastly, I will allow Drs. Marco Musiani, Luci Boltini, and Paul Paquette, authors of The World of Wolves, New Perspectives on Ecology, Behavior, and Management, to address the concern that because dogs don't look like wolves, they don't act like them. The authors agree that a great deal of morphological changes have indeed occurred in dogs since they parted from wolves, 
but the changes have had a minimal impact on behavior. After all, dogs probably had the greatest morphological deviations, meaning breeds, in the mammal world. But dog breeds are not distantly related to one another and are not different species from one another. Meaning, even with so many deviations in structure, a dog is still a dog and its behavior is fundamentally the same regardless of how it looks. You know, in the end, guys, I agree that some dogs don't look anything like a wolf and that some of their behaviors are unique to them, but the intentional stance that there's no wolf and dog serves to only discredit the dog and rob it of its supreme inheritance. But more importantly, it robs you of your ability to understand the animal that shares its life with you. If the tables are turned, would you not want your dog to understand why you do the things you do that are uniquely human? For the sake of your relationship, you would. Guys, the wolf is still there. It's still knocking at the door. Pay attention to it because your relationship with your dog deserves that you do. Be safe and be well. Hey guys, if you enjoy my videos or better yet, find them beneficial to your relationship with your dog, please like the video, share it with another dog loving friend and subscribe.